These plots you see in back of us are uh, a series of plots that we got around, scattered around in soybean fields in eastern South Dakota. Most are on producer fields, but we have several on experiment station. And uh, it's just rates of phosphorus uh, broadcast uh, on the soybeans and then looking at uh, yield response. And that's basically what it is. This happens to be soybean on soybean. Uh, which I don't like, but that's, that's uh, what we had available for us. Uh, but, um, and if you look at these rates, I don't see a lot of difference right now. Um, it may show up later. The soil test is fairly low in phosphorus, so I would expect some, some response. Uh, there's a white flag in back of us. These are some long-term plots. And that uh, soybeans right in back of that white flag have uh, not had phosphorus for, boy, at least 15 years. And you can see the beans on both sides uh, look a little better, I think, than, than there. And we've been measuring a uh, lot lower yields with the corn and the wheat or the soybeans uh, without that phosphorus. And I think soil test is like three part per million or something. And so they, they do respond. Typically, with soybeans, we'll get four, five, six, seven bushel. Uh, with added phosphorus, so very economical. Uh, we're also looking at a, a plot in Beersford where we're putting more on the corn and seeing if that'll carry over and do the same thing uh, as fertilizing every year with phosphorus. And, uh, and so that, uh, that's another, uh, another thing that we're looking at. But really the objectives here, and, and I should mention this is sponsored by the South Dakota Soybean Council, so we appreciate, uh, appreciate that. The objectives is to look at recalibrating our soil tests uh, for phosphorus and soybean because they haven't been calibrated probably for 25 years. And, uh, and so we need to look at that again with newer varieties, new uh, planting conditions. Uh, how do those recommendations work? Are they still valid or do we need to uh, update those? And also our leaf phosphorus uh, recommendations, interpreting uh, that, uh, that phosphorus in that uh, leaf sample. Uh, do they need to be updated as well? Um, and uh, there's one thing about soybean, uh, a phosphorus deficiency, it's really hard to see. With corn it shows up, wheat shows up pretty good. Corn you'll see purpling stems, purpling leaves. Uh, but soybeans, it'll be a little smaller, a uh, little less uh, uh, green. But if you've got a whole field that's deficient, you really can't pick it out that easily. And so there's where you can go in and take a leaf sample and see if there's any problems, uh, especially with phosphorus. And so that's, uh, that's one of the objectives as well. And then to determine any field variability on other nutrients as well. Uh, we've got a number of, uh, of fertilizer phosphorus strips, uh, one on Jerry's Place by Brookings, and a number of other ones scattered around the, the state. Some are a half a mile long, just one strip is with phosphorus, another is without, and we're gonna look at a number of nutrients uh, in the leaf and see how that varies. Uh, uh, throughout the field. And so that's, that's another objective as well. But uh, the next chart down here in the middle of the page on the left is uh, uh, rate of phosphorus, or I mean that's our current SDSU recommendations for soybean. And really the heavy recommendations come if you're in a low, very low test. When we get to the medium test uh, above eight, nine part per million, traditionally we haven't seen a lot of response to that added phosphorus. Corn, wheat, we get pretty good responses up to uh, 13, 14 part per million. But soybean, not so much. And we want to make sure if these newer varieties, uh, newer planting uh, conditions and uh, management practices, uh, if that still holds true. And so that's why we're trying to update. Um, the next chart here is a five years, uh, actually a 10 year study, but five year average mean yields for soybeans in a corn soybean rotation, both at Beersford and Brookings, uh, different phosphorus rates, and either we broadcast that on the surface, this was no-till, or we banded it with the planter. And you can see the average yields there. Really at Beersford, the broadcast didn't uh, really do much there on no-till, and we actually broadcast that after we planted to get minimal disturbance into the soil. 
The banded was two by two with the planter. Uh, that gave us some pretty economical increases uh, uh, to phosphorus. Uh, and Brookings, both the broadcast and the band, uh, gave us a pretty good uh, economical uh, increases. Nothing huge that you, you see with corn, but uh, they're very economical for the, uh, the amount applied. Um, and then we look at some older data, and this chart down here is from Nebraska. Uh, they're showing uh, broadcast did much better than banded. So I think we probably need some more work, uh, work with that too. If you look at a, a soybean root, keep, keep pulling off the uh, tap root here. But it's really a tap root, whereas uh, with grasses like corn, you got a bushy uh, bunch of roots right there on the surface. But a tap root here with soybean, and a number of people are saying, well, maybe we ought to put that pea, place it right underneath the seed when we plant it an inch or two. Whereas corn, the ideal thing is uh, uh, putting it out here two by two because that initial root goes kind of at a 45 degree angle. But with soybean, we get that tap root, and so there's some talk about putting that right under the seed as well. And so placement, we really need to, to look at that too with uh, phosphorus and uh, how, how that'll work. Um, the other thing here, the last, last chart is P rate and placement on early soybean growth. That's from the a soybean, uh, plot that we had at Southeast Farm. I took that data last night. Uh, when I looked at that, you can see the different rates. We use zero, 60 pounds of uh, phosphorus as MAP, uh, dry fertilizer, and then 120 pounds as MAP. And we spread that, worked it, in, worked it in, and then planted the soybeans. We also used another treatment, 30 pounds of phosphorus, as a starter, when we planted that, uh, we put that in with the seed. That's kind of a high rate. It's right on the border of that uh, with 30 inch rows, it could hurt some stand, but it didn't appear to uh, on, in this situation. But anyway, uh, we measured, uh, what I did was take 15 leaves, because they look bigger and bushier in the, with the high phosphorus. Out of each plot, I weighed those, and uh, you could see the, the lowest weight was the check. 52 grams, uh, then uh, it went right on up with uh, higher rates, gave us higher, higher weights. Now that might not turn into yield, we don't know yet, but for early growth, uh, it did increase early growth. And the starter actually uh, uh, did the best uh, as far as weight. And so, uh, as, and so we'll, we'll follow that and, uh, and uh, look at the phosphorus concentration in the leaves as well and then check yields at the end of the year. And so, uh, if you switch the page over here, um, like I said, you can get carried away with uh, putting that starter or phosphorus right with the seed with soybean. Corn is pretty, uh, pretty uh, resistant to that, those salts, those fertilizer salts, but soybean is a more sensitive crop. And so uh, we did some work uh, quite a while ago now with narrow row soybeans and, and 30 inch row soybeans applying different rates of phosphorus. In this case, it happens to be MAP. Uh, the MAP rate there is on the left, 0, 50, 100, and 200 pounds applied right with the seed. And uh, with the seven and a half inch rows, you're actually got more rows in an acre, so you're, uh, you're spreading that fertilizer out, less concentrated around the seed, where uh, wider rows, you're really concentrating that in. And so, but you can see the plants there. We counted the plants that emerged, 121,000 with a check, 50 pound didn't, uh, didn't do much to the, to the stand, but then we started reducing it with higher rates, as you would expect. Yields though, it, it knocked at three, four bushels uh, down when we got to those lower plant populations, but not a whole lot either. But then go to the 30 inch rows, and then the higher rates knock down stand right, uh, right from the get go. And, uh, and yield also was, uh, went from 39 on the check to 15, just because of lack of plants there. And so you've got to watch, uh, if you're putting that with the seed with soybean, uh, it's pretty sensitive. With narrow rows, you can get by with some, but uh, 
uh, wide rows I don't like to see a whole lot go in there. Plant sampling, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, if we're plant sampling this, this plant, what we do, usually we take it at initial bloom, but anytime you've got a problem, we say take it. What we do is take these leaflets here on the top uh, fully expanded leaf leaflet. And so that's what we use. We don't use the, the petiole here because uh, that's got a lower concentration of nutrients and so that can dilute our, our findings. But just the, just the leaflet. 15 to 20 of those and that uh, should be a good sample. And usually what we do is if you see a problem in the field, we like to take that 15 to 20 plant samples in the problem area, compare it with a good area. And that way it really becomes a powerful indicator of uh, if nutrients are a problem, what the problem is. And so uh, uh, that's, uh, that's what we like to see there. And the current plan analysis interpretation that we've got, and, and that's pretty similar to the states around us. And again, they haven't been updated for 20, 25 years, maybe, maybe longer than that. And so we're going to look at at least the phosphorus and see if uh, we need to update those values. Right now it's 0.26%. Uh, uh, if it, uh, reading is more than that, we say it's good, should be good. If it's below that, then there could be a, a problem with phosphorus. And the next couple of graphs, uh, uh, you can look at it your own, own uh, time, but uh, just showing some of the work with micronutrients and other products, haven't really seen a whole lot of uh, uh, response to those foliar products. And other states are showing the same thing around here. Um, really, if you've got a deficiency, try to get that uh, nutrient on before planting, and, uh, and that's when it'll do the most good. We just don't get a lot of that nutrient through the leaves. We get some, but uh, it doesn't do uh, a whole lot of, whole lot of good in, in the situation. So if we need a, a nutrient, uh, uh, get that on uh, right away. And so really that's, that's all I've got. Uh, if there's any questions on phosphorus or soybeans or any fertility thing, I'll, I can try to answer it. Mm -hmm.